Yu-Gi-Oh! is one of the most difficult trading card games to get into. With over 10,000 different cards, and so many different products to choose from, where do you even begin? Using a budget of just £30 a week, I set out to mould my own deck and climb the competitive ladder all the way to the European Championships. The challenge? All my cards have to be obtained through sealed official products. I'm not allowed to trade, I'm not allowed to buy cards individually, and instead have to rely on the cold, hard luck of the draw. You're watching Yu-Gi-Oh! From Scratch. Oh no, I knew this day was coming but I didn't expect it to be so soon. After all we've been through, it's finally time to say goodbye to our boy. At least he'll get to see his brother and sister again. God, I miss them so much. Psych! There ain't no LP on this list. There ain't nothing on this list. They haven't even touched us. I mean, yeah, they banned Destrudo, but we weren't using them anyway. This whole damn combo is still totally legal, so it's full steam ahead. Hello, yes, welcome to episode 23 of Yu-Gi-Oh! From Scratch. You've been waiting a little while for this, and that's because I spent so much time on that Dreamers video. So technically, this episode is for last week. Which means you're getting two episodes this week, this one, and I'll hopefully upload a second one on Sunday. This is also actually the first official episode of the Corona Lockdown, so uh, gameplay is going to be different today. Before we get into all that juicy stuff, though, there's been so many new supporters of the channel since the last episode. So massive thanks going out to Mike. Michael Kemp, Tyler Detheraj, Alejandro Cuenca, 67 Fox, 10 AM Frick Fight, Vermin 9, Maxwell Schledetsky, Jesse M, and Hendrik. All these guys backed the channel on either YouTube channel memberships or Patreon. A bunch of them even joined at the top tier at the same time, so it genuinely felt like I got a job promotion or something, so thank you so much. As always, if you want to make your own contribution, links are in the description. So what's actually changed since the last episode now that we have a new ban list? Honestly, not much at all. Looking at the list of cards we made in the last episode that we need, the only change I would make here is that we'd no longer need Steam the Cloak, obviously because it got banned, and we don't actually need Cyanet Mining. We have much better options that don't require a discard for one card Needle Fibers, and for that reason, we now need Salomon Great Almirage. Thankfully, that is also in Dual Overload, so we'll start hammering away at that soon, but for now though, we need to get that damn Dragon Buster. Yeah, not that one. The other one. Stupid! Right, so another £30 to blow on our deck here, and I'm sure most of you will be unsurprised at what we're opening today. Six packs of Rise and Rampage, and six packs of Breakers of Shadow. Remember, it is just a common we're looking for out of Breakers of Shadow, so it really shouldn't be that hard to pull. Of course, out of Rise and Rampage, it's Bow Mommy we're looking for, however, if we don't pull her today, I think I'm just going to leave her till last, because chances are she may get announced for a reprint in like the new Battles of Legends set or something, and I don't want to spend loads of time on Rise and Rampage trying to pull her, just to then get shafted in the end. So yeah, let's just dive into the first pack here. Starting with Rise and Rampage, we have Draw Discharge, followed by Smorg, Bird of Protection, Marincess Sea Star, Vishuda, and Mayo Sanju Hitot for the super and a bunch of junk towards the end as well. I'm a little bit desensitized to Rise and Rampage after that Dream Mirrors video, like opening three boxes, so it's gonna be nice to take a break from it for a while. Anyway, in the first pack of Break as a Shadow here, we have Robot Buster Destruction Sword. We're pulling every one except the one we need. We're looking for the Dragon Buster, uh, Jizukiru, which is a really nice rare, and another rarity bumped Twin Twisters. Wow, okay, so we have two supers now. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, Destruction Swordsman, Shirinoi Performance. Swallow Slash was actually worth a fair bit of money not too long ago. I'm not sure if it's like short printed in the set or anything, but yeah, pretty cool to have, I guess. I actually love opening older sets. It's just so much fun. I really don't know why though. It's probably because as a vendor, I open so much of newer products that it just sort of desensitizes me, I guess. Here we have Domino Man, Yosenju, Sabu, Reversible, Beetle, Star Power, and Samorg of Darkness as our super rare. There was a bunch of comments on the Dream Mirrors video suggesting different sealed only archetypes now and one of them was sealed only Samorgs. Just stop, okay? You guys are actually just decimating my bank account. Oh, we got it! Yay! Dragon Buster Destruction Sword! There we go, that's what we're looking for, boys. Great Grey Wolf Sif. If you know, you know. Thank God we got it. What else we got here? We got little itsy bitsy turtle, thick green thighs, little snow fairy dude. Yo! Buster Dragon! Ultra rare! <laughs> I swear this is like the most expensive card in the set. That's sick, man. 
uh, Performance, Hurricane, Cosmo Delta Shuttle and Following. I can't believe we got that. You know, interestingly enough, this is its only printing and it recently got bought out in America to like $50 for some reason. I don't know why. Very cool. And we got a second Vashuda here and a Link Mail Archfiend for the Hollow out of that Rise and Rampage pack. So what was I speaking about again? Oh yeah, you're, you're sealed only archetypes. Everyone wants to see something different. So I have an idea that can satisfy everyone, hopefully. It's called Sub Sunday. I know it sounds cheesy as hell and it's gonna start off with the conclusion to the Dream Mirror video. It's gonna be the Dream Mirror Mirror match. But the top comment on that video will choose either a deck or a deck challenge. And then on the next Sunday, I would play that. And then the top comment of that video gets next Sunday, you know, so on and so forth. Obviously with the whole quarantine and lockdown thing, it would be purely online. Oh, we did get an ultra, Fortune Lady Calling. I really, <laughs> I didn't expect that. It's worth nothing anyway. But yeah, I think there's a bunch of cool things that we could do with that idea so if you're interested let me know in the comments and I'll do it. So five packs left including this pack of Breakers of Shadow. We've got Dynamist Ceratops, Thick Thighs, Performable Trump Girl, High Speed Droid Hagoita with some shuttlecocks in the background, Cosmo Sword Troopers for the Super, Destruction Swordsman, Shirinoi High Speed Relevel and Karma of the Destruction Swordsman with that badass artwork. Second last pack of Rise and Rampage here, we've got Return to the Normal, Yusenju Sabu, Psychic Fervor, Berserker of the Tenyi for our rare, and another Ultra, wow, Dragoonity Knight Romulus, a second or third copy I believe? Uh, Fury of Fire, Blockout Curtain, Beat Raptor, and Link back. You know, I don't actually think we've pulled a single Dream Mirror card today, I, th I, I think the meme's dead guys. So second last pack of Bosch here, we got another, a second Dragon Buster Destruction Sword. God damn it, you know, that kind of just proves that it's not difficult to get and we just got unlucky in the last episode. We've got Pendulum Storm for the Hollow here and the rest of the commons. Final pack of Rise and Rampage here. Is it going to be a Dream Mirrorless episode? We've got Rogue, Rescue Interlacer, Glory Hole, Tenu Spirit, Nahata, it's a spell, Hypernova Burst, Reptilian. Yeah, no Dream Mirror cards, wow. I'm actually surprised, but yeah, that takes us to our final pack here of Breakers of Shadow. It's been a really good opening. We got that Twin Twisters and Buster Dragon, and we got the common we need, of course. That's all we're here for. But we have Deskbot 007, Performance Hurricane, Deskbot 008, of course, 009 next, uh, or not, Ceratops, Blackwing, Harmit in the Dust, Thick Thighs, got a playset of that, Score the Melodious Diva, Performer Paul Guitartle, and another Darth Vader. So £30 well spent, I would say. We might have even plussed if Buster Dragon gets bought out enough. We got what we need, which means we can now move on to Dual Overload, which I'm quite excited for. That'll most likely be in the next episode, but for now, we have some gameplay to record, and it's going to be online, so let's talk about that. So as you know, thanks to the global pandemic, physical Yu-Gi-Oh! is essentially cancelled. Because of this, to continue playing the game, players are having to resort to unofficial online platforms like Dueling Book and Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro. So for now, those are the two platforms we're going to be using for the gameplay sections of Yu-Gi-Oh! from scratch. The cool thing about this is that it allows you guys to get involved. That's right, it could be you getting your cheeks clapped in the next episode, yay! So right now, when I'm looking for a duel to record, I'll post in the Patrons Discord chat, yeah that's right, Patrons and YouTube channel members get priority here. I have to be a responsible content creator, leave me alone. But in the off chance that no patrons are online or no one fancies a duel, I'll post in the public chat on Discord. Then it becomes a free-for-all. If you're a YouTube channel member, I have to assign your Discord role manually. It's not automatic like on Patreon. So if you don't have your Discord role and you are a YouTube channel member, leave a comment down below and they'll get it sorted for you. We are still trying to get that nuke, so I'm trying to get a 25 kill streak, and you guys are essentially now trying to stop me. So game on, bitches. Let's do this. Alright, so opponent number one for today is our patron, Andrew Price. Hey for gang! Okay. High five! <laughs> High five! Snaked! Yo! Yo! So he chooses to go first and we're playing against generators. Starting with a Lone Fire Blossom, he's able to tribute that and summon the big plant generator from the deck, which searches any generator card. He adds generator boss fight and then drops monstrosity, 
which is pretty much just a free Calamities just like that. So of course he overlays for Calamities, activates the field spell, and during the end phase his other generator that was summoned off Monstrosity gets destroyed. Over to us we top deck Ash for turn, which is too little too late, but the thing about the generator field spell is that when you add a card from the deck to your hand, including during the draw phase, it can summon any generator from the deck. So I just drop the Ash straight away on that, otherwise he gets any generator he wants and then the field spell fills his board with tokens as fodder for their effects. On resolution, he activates his Calamities Call in Dark, and while our hand is really good, it unfortunately relies a lot on monster effects and can't really play through a Calamities. If it was just Calamities by itself, I would be able to link my way up to Boral Sword and actually survive, but because of his trap, he gets a new field spell and its first effect is not a hard ones per turn, so he's able to get the new generator monster on the board which has a quick effect, target one card, banish it. If I was running Boral Load, I might have been able to play through this, but I'm not, so uh, yeah, there was really not much I could do, unfortunately. 100 life points! Are you ready for the comeback of the century? I mean, it kind of depends what those two cards are. Goliath, really. Game 2, we side in our traps and choose to go first, and our hand is just perfect. Two Crusadia cards is, of course, our full combo, and then Lost Wind on top of that, there's no way he can win. Thankfully, he has zero interruptions, so we are able to make our full board of Spheres, Harbinger and Savage, plus Lost Wind and we just have to wait and see if he can break it. He starts by setting 3 back row, which is a little bit spooky, then he activates terraforming, which I assume is bait, so I let it go through and he gets his field spell. Normal summoning a lone fire blossom, I activate spheres to bounce it back to his hand before he can activate its effect. Summoning tempest off the effect of spheres, he just passes turn, so during the end phase, tempest comes back to hand. Drawing into a Dragon Shrine, my main focus here is to Phoenix away one of his back row. I special summon Wyver Burster, to which he activates Generator Boss Fight. Now, I don't care about that, I don't have to negate it, because when he activates his field spell, I can just negate that with Harbinger, keeping my Omni Negate on Savage. In response to the Harbinger negate, he flips, there can be only one, so I have to negate that with Savage, leaving him with one back row left. Thankfully it's nothing spicy, so we're able to Phoenix it away and then attack him for the full 8000 points of damage. Game 3, we side in some back row hate and he chooses to go first, but our hand is terrible man, we can maybe stop him from doing things, but we literally just can't combo with this hand. He starts by activating Generator Boss Quest, which searches for any two generator spells or traps, so uh, obviously we're gonna have to ash that. Fortunately, it seems as if that ash was enough, because he sets one back row and just passes turn. Oh god, okay. We have Quick Launch, that changes everything. I start by activating my Cyclone to banish his back row, and turns out it was a Judgment. It's definitely Judgment. Yeah, there we go, right. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I normal summon Silver Rocket and Link into Striker Dragon, getting a free search for Boot Sector launch. However, he hits us with the Ash Blossom. Thankfully, we didn't actually need Boot Sector launch. If he did save that for Quick Launch, then we would have been absolutely screwed. So now I Quick Launch for Tracer and activate Tracer's effect, pop in Striker Dragon to get Recharger from the deck. Synchroing into Borrow Load Savage, I'm able to get one counter, so I have one negate for his next turn, and I can summon Tempest as well for a hefty chunk of damage. Setting Reboot, we literally have no recovery if he's able to push through this one negate. We use it on his Generator Boss Quest, the one that searches two spells or traps, and just have to hope he can do nothing else. Boys, unless he has Gores or Battle Fader. Huh! Oh yeah. Round 2, we're up against Neopixel, otherwise known as Unga Boonga, playing his Metal Foes Dinos. He wins the Rock Paper Scissors match and chooses to go first, and our hand is absolute garbage, although we do have Ash and Phantasmi if he does decide to link, I guess. He starts by scaling Abysmagear and normal summoning a baby, activating the effect of Abysmagear to pop the baby. That's totally fine, however, on resolution, when he tries to activate baby's effect, that's when I drop the Ash, and uh, I guess he kind of bricked, because it forces him to end his turn. Drawing Tracer is pretty good here, as it actually allows us to do things, but I start with Dragon Shrine to send Absorator, adding any rocket to hand. I add Rocket Recharger. So I normal summon the Recharger, and Lincoln to Striker Dragon, I really don't think I had to do that, because I have Absorator Engrave anyway to banish for Wyver Burster, but I did it anyway. So now I link into Romulus and chain block the Wyver Burster, so I can search for Collapse Serpent. 
Summoning the Collapse Serpent, I then use Boot Sector Launch to summon the Tracer, which gets us to the Guard Dragon Arrows, which inevitably gets us to the OTK. Game 2, we're going second once again, and I wasn't actually able to side anything because I always forget to click the swap cards button on Dueling Book, so when I opened Goliath I was a little bit disappointed, but we do have the Ash once again. Pixel sets a back row and activates terraforming, searching for Lost World. Normal summons Miscellaneousaurus, gives us a token, and passes turn. We top deck the Collapse Serpent for turn, but outside of the snake, our hand is really unplayable. So I set World Legacy Guard Dragon and activate Snake, hoping he doesn't snipe it, so we get something a little bit more juicy. Thankfully he does miss, and we draw into a Silver Rocket, which makes our hand 100% playable. Linking the token he gave us into a Link Spider, I then activate Boot Sector Launch to special summon Silver Rocket from hand. Honestly, I could have just normal summon Silver Rocket, but hey ho. So linking our rocket into LP, I can then activate the World Legacy Guard Dragon we set to revive Silver Rocket and then move LP one zone to the right. This makes LP live, and we all know what happens when LP is live. You win! Shoutouts to Konami for not banning LP, thank you very much. For the third and final round, we're up against Jojo, also known as Nibiru in the Discord. He's not a Patreon, but he's like the most active member, so uh, if you're in the Discord, you'll know who he is. He's playing Light Sworn combo, and he's going first. He starts by activating Charge of the Light Brigade, and after seeing his mills were garbage, I decide to drop the Ash. I'm not actually sure if this was correct or not, but he has the called by anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. Adding Lumina to hand, he then activates a second charge of the Light Brigade, because these are old cards, they don't have once per turn restrictions, and once again his mills are quite garbage, purely because he forgets to activate the Trick Clown. This time he adds a Raiden, then activates Solar Recharge to discard it, and then draw two and mill two. Once again his mills are rather garbage, but because Raiden's now in the graveyard, he normal summons Lumina, activating her effect, discarding Starleage Seifert to summon the Raiden. Raiden then mills two, hitting the Destrudo, which he activates, paying half his life points, to summon target in the Raiden, so Lumina and Destrudo are both level 3. Dante! I'm not that surprised, I guess. Nice mills, brother. <laughs> what? Alright, well, this shouldn't be too big of a deal. Boom. Wait for it. Boom. <laughs> okay, right, he's gonna put in the Beerus, which is a little bit worrying. Um, he's also going to go first, so we want to take out the Called by the Graves. Although he he could mill the Nibirus, so I have a way of negating it if I do it that way. Uh, so I can get rid of Goliath. And what else would I actually want to put in here? I guess Pancratops and Nibirus would be nice as well. So we'll get rid of one Dragon Shrine, one World Legacy Guard Dragon. And I suppose a Brotar as well. They're the least useful ones. Swap them over. Let's go. And we open the Nibiru and Phantasmae and Nibiru. Okay, right. This is going to get interesting. I want to resolve the Phantasmae so I can put the second Nibiru back and hopefully fix the hand. And then I can summon Nibiru. Little did I know, he bricked, he summoned four times and he didn't link summon. Overlay for Minerva, mill three. Nice mills, brother. I might not actually be able to do anything. No! <laughs> Shit! Oh dear. Normal summoning the Tracer, I link into Striker Dragon, getting a search for Boot Sector Launch. Then, because he controls one more monster than I do, I can activate Boot Sector Launch to revive Tracer. Linking both of these into Romulus, I get a search for Dragon Ravine, and it also enables Arborea in my hand, so we can easily go for the Boral Sword kill, but Minerva has an effect when she gets destroyed, she mills three, and for every Light Sworn card she mills, she can destroy up to that many cards on the field. So in order to secure the kill, I would need to get Borrowload Savage on board with Boral Sword to negate her effect. Now, I didn't see it while I was playing, but there is actually a line of play that does that and wins the game. So here's a little commenter's challenge for you. If you can comment the correct line of play that wins a game in this turn with Boral Sword and Borrowload Savage, then you win. Nothing, but you win. I decide to pussy out and just summon Tempest to crash into Minerva. Nice mills, brother. What? Oh my god. God, I should have just killed him. From there, in main phase 2, I banish Tempest for Red MD, then summon Arborea and use Red MD to summon Phantasme from hand. I then link off Romulus and Red MD for Spheres, 
pretty shit board. I really don't know what I'm doing, but you know, it'll have to do. He manages to get to a Dengursu, which we bounce with spheres. He synchros into Big Mike and activate its effect, which we negate and destroy with Phantasme. And finally, we beat his face through an empty board. So we got another three wins in this episode, pushing our kill streak up to five. Friendly Predator missile inbound. That's us just coming up to the 200 games played mark as well. That is a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh. But yeah, boys, if you want to stop the nuke, you're going to have to try a little harder. So I forgot to mention this earlier, but if you're still watching and appreciating the content, please show me by smashing that like button. Also, if you're completely new here, hi, hello, welcome, consider hitting that subscribe button and tickling my bell to stay tuned for more. We have a big giveaway running at the moment, so if you haven't heard about that, go watch the previous video, the Dreamers from Scratch video, to find out all the details. The winners will be getting chosen within the next couple or few days. I said the next episode would hopefully be up on Sunday, but don't be surprised if it gets uploaded on Monday because I really do underestimate the time it takes to make these things. Regardless, I really do appreciate you sticking with me. That 25k subscriber mark is literally just around the corner. Um, but yeah, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Do you know?